Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I have a viewer letter today about slopes, something a lot of us have to deal with. And I'm going to talk about the question and not really answer it until my next video. Because I want to go over the basics of slopes, hills, how steep can I take my tractor. And there are 10 things that dictate that. I get questioned all the time, how steep a slope can I take my tractor on? Well, I can't answer that because of these 10 variables. But let's get to the letter first, and then we'll talk about slopes. Letter comes from Mitch, and Mitch says, Mike, I have to bush hog a pond bank, and I worry that I will roll over. So I back up the slope and roll down to cut all the way around. Does anyone make some type of a simple level indicator that shows the degree of slant of the tractor to avoid rollovers? If I look at it. Thanks, Mike. Mitch. Well, Mitch, they do, and it's called an inclinometer. And I'll show you one. We'll install it on my tractor and talk about it in the next video. But before we go there, I get asked all the time, how steep a slope can I take my tractor on? And I can't answer that because there are 10 things that dictate how steep a slope you can take your tractor on. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want you to watch this video before you rely on an inclinometer to tell you how steep a slope you can go on because there are variables. And before we talk about that, how big a deal is rollovers? Tractor rollover is a huge deal. It's, it's the, probably the biggest danger that exists for you in operating a tractor if you live in hill country like I do. Farming is either the first or the second most dangerous occupation. Mining is usually number one, farming is usually number two. 80% of farming accidents occur around machinery. Of those, 75% involve tractors, and of those, 60% involve tractor rollover. So it's a big problem. And if you're like most of us that are hobby farmers, you know the farmers kept the good ground, the bottom land that's flat, and the rest of us are on the hills. It's pretty, but it's a little bit scary when you're trying to brush hog it or maintain it. So there are 10 things today that dictate how steep a slope you can go on. In the, ones that I start out with happen before you ever get out on the tractor. The first one is the design of the tractor. And a couple of things to look at here. First off is the center of gravity. How low is the tractor? The tire height dictates that. If you're on hills, you probably want to get lower tires. How the operator is on the tractor dictates it, the height of the tractor. There are straddle mount, semi-straddle mount, and platform tractors. And if you're shopping for a tractor, if you can see the transmission in the middle and you have to climb over it to get on the tractor, it's a little bit of a hassle, but generally a straddle mount tractor will sit lower to the ground and keep you more stable. I own both a straddle mount tractor where the transmission's in a hump in the middle and a flat platform tractor, and I feel a lot safer on the straddle mount tractor than I do the flat platform tractor. That may be something you want to look at. A third thing you might want to look at in terms of the tractor design is where's the fuel tank. If you're all fueled up with diesel, that's a lot of weight somewhere on that tractor. Is it under the hood? Is it behind you, behind your seat, up high? Or is it down low like this tractor, underneath the step? You know, a lot of people don't like that low fuel tank because you know you might hit something when you're bush hogging and make a hole in it. But that's awful nice to have that weight down low where it tries to keep you down on the ground. Number two is the condition of the tractor. And a couple of things to look at here. Obviously, you want good brakes on your tractor. If you roll off down a hill uncontrollably, you want to be able to stop. The main thing, of course, though, is your tire tread. As the tires get worn, their ability to stay on a hill lessen. So you want to make sure your tractor is well maintained, it has good tread on the tires, it has good brakes, and everything is working on it. There are some older tractors that tend to jump out of gear. And if you're on a hill and you jump out of gear suddenly and off you go, you may not be able to stop. So the mechanical condition of the tractor is number two. Number three is ballast. And if you're on any kind of slope at all, the very least I recommend is to have some kind of fluid in the tires. Some kind of liquid ballast in there. In the south you can use water. In the northern areas you want to use something that doesn't freeze. And that's the thing I would get as I'm buying the tractor before I get it delivered is get fluid in the tires. And if you're going to use a front end loader very much, you'll need that anyway. 
I don't know how much ballast you'll need. I can't predict that. If you're on really steep slopes, you may want wheel weights as well. But I start with the fluid in the tires because that weight is down low and it's fairly cheap to put in the tires. You may want to add the wheel weights later. And I've seen all kinds of configuration of weights on a tractor. The guys that mow the highway right of ways have suitcase weights mounted on the front of their tractors as well. And that's a possibility you may want to look at. Now the number four thing that impacts your potential for rollover is your tread spacings. On smaller tractors with a single piece rim, about the only option you have is to change the tires from the left to the right side. In other words, put the left tire and rim on the right side and the right one on the left side. And usually the dish will push the tread setting out, giving you a wider footprint. On a tractor where the center section and the rim are bolted together, you have multiple tread spacings. And if you put them all the way out, a lot of times they'll be out past the fender. Makes it tough to get around in tight spaces, makes it hard to load on a trailer, but it will make it a lot more stable on a slope. So you may want to adjust your front and rear tire widths to get a wider footprint to make you more stable on slopes. Number five, obviously, is the degree of slope that you're on. And bear in mind, you may be on a certain degree slope right here, and 10 feet from here that could change. We'll talk about that in a minute. Number six thing I want to talk about is fuel conditions. And mostly that means two things, moisture and holes. Let's talk about moisture first. If there's been a recent rain, or if you're doing work early in the morning or late at night and there's a dew on the grass, it can get really slick. And if you slide down that hill, that could lead to a tractor rollover. The next thing is really critical to watch out for is holes in the field. If the ground has been bulldozed and there's some holes where a tree root ball came out and your front wheel that's on the downhill slope goes down in that hole, it can roll you over really quickly. So watch for holes in the field. And if you're working at night, something I highly recommend you get if you've got an open station tractor is my RBI tractor light. It's roll bar illumination is what RBI stands for and that'll help you see those holes. It's a light that goes with magnets on your roll bar and it'll help you see where you're going and avoid holes that might roll you over. It's available on my website. I'll put a link at the end. The number seven thing to kind of keep an eye on is wind. If you're on a downhill side slope and you've got a wind going against you, uh, it can accelerate the ability to roll over. So be careful if you're in windy conditions. The number eight thing that impacts your chance for a rollover is your attachments. If you're using a loader, keep your load as low as you can on hills. And if you're moving dirt, make sure you don't have all the dirt on the downhill side. That tends to help roll you over. Spread it out or put it on the uphill side. Rear attachments can actually help keep you stable on slopes. If you've got a box blade, keep it as low as you can. But the two that worry me are sickle mowers and disc mowers. If you're mowing hay on a slope and you've got a disc mower bar out there and you lift it up from the downhill side, that can pick the tractor up and roll it over. So if you're mowing, mow toward the uphill side and if you pick it up, even picking it up and letting it go all the way over can make you roll over. So be real careful with the loader bucket and what you've got in it and the rear attachments. Be cognizant of those at all times. Number nine and ten are directly related to you. Number nine is fatigue. A lot of us have jobs in town. We try to get our work done on weekends or after hours, and you can be really tired on that tractor. And the more fatigued you are, the greater your chance of accident. And tying right into that is number ten. And this is probably the biggest thing that you can do to minimize your chances of a rollover, and that's slow down. The slower you're going, the less chance you have of a tractor rollover. The faster you're going, the more chance you've got to roll that tractor over. So try not to be on that tractor when you're worn out and slow down when you're on slopes. It'll greatly decrease the chance of tractor rollover. Now I said I'm going to answer Mitch's question in my next video. If you've taken all of these factors into consideration, there is a device called an inclinometer that you can install on a tractor that will tell you the slope you're on. It will tell you how much of a slope you're on. And we'll install that in the next video. Now one last thing I want to say, and this is the most important thing, if you get nothing from the video, get this. 
If you have a tractor rollover and you have a functioning seat belt and it's fastened, you have a roll bar in the upright position locked, you have better than a 99% chance of surviving the rollover. If you don't, that goes way down. And I guarantee you, there's people watching this video that are first responders that could tell you terrible stories about finding people in the field that have had a tractor roll over on them or maybe it's still on top of them. It's not the way we want to end. So we want you to be safe. We want you to keep these factors in mind when you're using your tractor. And next week we'll tell you about an inclinometer. I appreciate you watching my videos. I'd be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking the mic face icon and check the bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website in the Tractor Fun Store with the RBI tractor light for sale that will help you see holes when you're in the field. And here's a couple other videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.